Welcome to this course, Azure Cognitive Services for Developers. My name is Gerald Sluis, and in this course, I will be teaching you everything there is to know about the Azure Cognitive Services and how you can develop with them. In this course, I will guide you through what you can do with the Cognitive Services, and as a developer, how you can incorporate them in your own applications, and how you can use them for your benefit to make working with your applications easier for your users, and how you can impress them with how smart your application actually is. Before we dive in any deeper, let me tell you a little bit about myself. My name is Gerald Versluis. I am from the Netherlands. I am a developer in the broadest sense of the word, so I do a lot of things. I have been working for the past couple of years with Azure, ASP.NET. I know things about DevOps, and I also do things with cross-platform development, with apps, with Xamarin. I'm a Microsoft MVP, and if you want to know anything more, or you want to connect because you have any questions or remarks about this course, please go to the handle right here, jfversluis.dev, and you will find all the social handles that are associated to me. So my GitHub, my blog, my YouTube, all kinds of things that you can find there. Choose the right one, and yeah, please connect with me if you have anything to say. Let's have a look at what we are going to see in this course. This course has seven sections. In section one, we will have an introduction to the Azure Cognitive Services. So we will go over all the different categories that are included in the Cognitive Services, and in each category, we are going to quickly look at the services that are available to you. In the second section, we're going to see a little bit about how to set up the cognitive services from the Azure portal. For each service that you want to use, you have to set up a resource in the Azure portal. I'm going to show you how to do it, get the API key out there so you can use it in your own applications. And from there on out, I'm not going to repeat that for every section, but I will show you at once the whole process. So from there, you can start doing it by yourself. In section three, we're going to look at the actual first category, which is vision. So we're going to look at computer vision, uh, which can describe for you what is in an image. It can get back a certain tags with a certain score. So how confident is it that something is to be seen in this image? It can give you a description and it can give you all kinds of other things. Like, is it maybe content that you do not want your users to see? Another service is the face API with which you can send faces, you can recognize people. You can recognize certain emotions in their face. You can also see landmarks in their faces. So where are the eyes? How are the eyebrows positioned? There is a very detailed set of data coming back from the face API that you can use. So you can use that to create all kinds of awesome applications or maybe some face scanner authentication for your app. Your imagination is the only limit here. In section four, we are going to look at the speech category. So there are different services in here as well, but two of them is the speech to text and the other way around the text to speech. So here you can convert actual speech into text. So whenever you start talking, then it will give you back the transcription, the written form of what is being said, which can be used for live subtitling or all kinds of other things. And the other way around, whenever you type some text, you can turn that into speech. So this is very popular right now in the home assistance, and it allows for your application to have natural conversations with your end users. Then in section five, we're going to focus on language, and this has to do with translating language. So translating from one language to another, or you can do some sentiment analysis. So send in a piece of text and extract the sentiment. Are people happy or are they sad about something? We're going to see how to use that in your application. Then in section six, we're going to explore the last category, which is search. So these are all services that are built upon the Bing search engine. So we can search for certain images or even videos. We can search for local businesses, or we can search for news items. All that kind of stuff is what we're going to see in this video. Then in section seven, we're going to look at a summary. So what have we learned? What have we seen? And I'm going to give you some pointers on how to proceed from here, as well as some more examples that you can look at for inspiration. Let's quickly touch upon the prerequisites. You're going to have to have an active Azure subscription, so you can just sign up. I think you do need a credit card, but from there it will all be free. So your credit card will not be charged, of course, unless you choose a tier that is actually paid. But all the services that you're going to see in this course can be started with a free tier. So you can do a lot of requests without having to pay a penny. Also, you're going to need Visual Studio for Windows 2017 or 19. It can be the Community Edition, which is the free edition. We're not going to do anything too exciting with features of Visual Studio. You're just going to need a IDE that can create some C-sharp code that you're going to see in this course. 
You can also follow along on a Mac. In that case, you will need Visual Studio for Mac, also 2017 or 2019. And also, again, you can use the Community Edition, which is free. As you will see in this course, the Azure Cognitive Services can be used from any language and any platform. So if you are familiar with any other IDE or language and you know how to do HTTP requests with them, I invite you to use any other IDE and just use that with the samples that we have seen so far. So maybe you are a big fan of uh, JetBrains and you want to use Rider, or maybe you want to use Visual Studio Code. We're also going to see that in our course. So there's going to be a variety of different tools and platforms and languages that you can use. Furthermore, you will need a basic understanding of programming. I'm not going to spell out everything that you will see on screen. The focus of this course will be the Azure Cognitive Services and how to use them. So I'm going to assume that you have a basic understanding of how to make HTTP requests, communicate with REST APIs, and we're going to see mostly C Sharp. So I'm going to assume that you already have some knowledge of that. Because we are going to communicate with REST services, optionally, you could use a tool like Postman to compose your own HTTP requests manually and inspect the outcome that is coming back by sending manual requests with a tool like Postman. Some other things that are good to know with this course. So each Azure Cognitive Service will have its own sample application and they are all standalone. So you can just get them from the GitHub repository that is associated with this course and you should be able to run them out of the box. The only thing that you still need to do is add your own API key that you're getting from the Azure portal. But from there, you can start exploring on your own with the code that is provided.